It adds both to our enjoyment and our understanding of Tristan and Isolde if we know the leading motives of the work and can follow them in all their transformations. A great deal of the opera is built up out of just a few motives that are presented in ever new forms according to the psychological situation of the moment. For example, the work opens with two motives, the first of which is known as the grief motive. While the second is called by some commentators the desire motive, by others the motive of Isolde's magic. Generally speaking, it represents the hunger and the torture of their love. The second motive is subjected to many modifications in the course of the work, and in the prelude to the third act, when the wounded Tristan is lying on his couch in a fever, longing for Isolde to come to him, it takes this gloomy and agonized form. And a little later, and later still, and we hear it again in the O Boys and English Horn in almost the very last bar of the opera, this time with other harmonies. Wagner never changed a motive for the mere sake of change. If a character doesn't alter, his motive doesn't alter. Thus King Mark, who appears for a little while only at the end of the second and the end of the third act, goes through no psychological change, and so his two chief motives remain the same. The first of them, which you will hear on record 27, expresses his grief at what he takes to be the treachery of Tristan and Isolde. The second, which appears a little later, depicts the grave, noble, rather sad nature of the good old man. Now here is another example of how Wagner modifies his themes harmonically to express a different mental state. The second act opens with an impetuous motive that symbolizes the glaring day that the lovers hate. In the second act, when the lovers are surprised by Mellot and the others, Tristan says sadly, the barren day this last time dawns, and we hear the day motive in these mournful forms. I can give you here only the main motives of the opera. Here are some more of them from the prelude. The motive of the hero Tristan. In the first act, at the critical moment when Tristan is summoned into the presence of Isolde, record nine, this takes a more imposing form. Next, in the prelude, comes the expressive motive of the look, the meaning of which you will find in the text of record six. Next, the theme of the love potion. The three notes in the bass near the end are important. They constitute the death motive.
later comes a motive which Wagner said represented the ivy and the vine that in the old legend met and intertwined over the graves of the lovers. Then the motive of longing for death. transformed into this in the duet in the second act. act, there is an important motive sung by Isolde to the words, death devoted head, death devoted heart. This takes a very subtle harmonic form later. Prelude to the second act, record 15, comes the ecstasy motive. Which is largely used later in the love duet and appears again in Isolde's Liebestod, now expressing the very consummation of spiritual ecstasy. motive which takes various forms and is here skeletonized typifies the night in the mystical sense of the word into which the lovers long to be absorbed. The motive of union beyond death appears first in the second act, record 25, and at the end of the opera it forms the commencement of the Liebestod. Mm -hmm. 